Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, may I have your attention? There is a red van in the parking lot that we would ask be moved because of the drive through for the chicken dinners. Thank you. Don. No, she's not doing that anymore, I guess. Maybe she got out of the habit. Yes, it is. NIV. NIV. I don't know what matters.
Good morning, seminary. You know, it isn't really a great day outside, but I can still say it's a beauty day because we are here together um, to worship and for fellowship, and I see all these smiling faces looking at me, and there's nothing that beats that. So thank you for being here. I see, I see some new faces, perhaps. Thank you. Some faces we haven't seen for a while. We appreciate that you're here. Um, I do have a few announcements. Um, Tuesday is our um, crafty, I always want to say crazy, crafty corners. It's, it can be crazy, too. Our, our, our women who come and have fellowship together on Tuesdays and lunch. And if you will um, notice in your bulletin, there are some announcements. Um, our, no, our Thanksgiving dinner has been changed from the 14th to the 21st. Um, and there will be more about that later. There will be a pancake breakfast fundraiser on November 6th for, uh, to, um, for the youth group. And if you will uh, also, let me see here. Uh, if you, um, we still have a few spots left for coffee hour after church, and there will not be a coffee hour today, right, because of the dinner, the chicken dinner. So um, we hope that you will drive through, pick up a chicken dinner, and go home and enjoy it a lot. Um, we are having a food pantry distribution on Saturday, next Saturday. Um, hope that you will take part in that. And yes, Ron. I I don't know that you can buy tickets, but it, your money's as good as anybody's. So if you got the money, you don't need a ticket. I think uh, I I think Jenny would know, but I I the last I knew. Yes, there are some left. So just put put your money out there and have some chicken. Um, I did want to um, oh and um, sign up for coffee hour if you if you can and again you only need to you don't have to host if you just want to provide the goodies um, some of us will do the coffee and and host uh, Jean Ann AAA's services are today at two o'clock no two o'clock visiting hours and three o'clock to two, two to three thirty visiting hours, and then at three thirty will be the service. Where? Roanoke Chapel. Roanoke Chapel. And as you know, Jean Ann's been very important to this church um, over the years. Are there any other announcements? Well, we have some birthdays that we're going to acknowledge. We have a lot of birthdays this first week of October. Anne McFerrin was on the first. Happy birthday, Anne. Diana Hathaway is, they're not, oh, yes, she is. There she is. Diana Hathaway is on the fifth. Janet Tellis is on the sixth. And Deb Ewell is on the eighth. Are there any other birthdays this week? Well, then let's sing. Oh, is there another one? Which day? The 8th? Okay, well, we're singing to you as well. We're going to sing happy birthday to all you October birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And we do have anniversaries. Those are listed in the, in the bulletin as well. I'm not sure anybody is here who is having an anniversary. Oh, yes? When, you're, you're not listed. When's your anniversary? The 7th. Okay, Don and Peggy on the 7th. Then we are going to sing happy anniversary to Don and Peggy.
Uh, this is the time that we prepare our hearts for worship. If you will please join me. Um, stand, please, if you're able, and join me in the call to worship. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commands of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. And if you'll please remain standing for our first hymn. Thank you, and you may be seated. Please join us in singing our next song, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you're here to save us You came from heaven to earth To show the way From the dark to the cross My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave unto the sky Lord, I lift your name on high Let's try singing again. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, you got it. You came from heaven to earth. To show the way from the earth unto the cross, my debt to pay from the cross unto the grave, 
from the grave unto the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You all sounded good out there. Give yourselves a round of applause. We're going to invite the, uh, for any one of um, the youth or the, the young ones, I know we're all children, but if uh, you would like to come forward and sing our last song, we invite the, the youth to come forward who would then be dismissed to Children's Church. You don't have to come, I know. No one likes, no one likes coming up here, believe it or not. Even I get nervous sometimes. We're going to sing, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. You got it. Take it away. All right. So is everyone ready? And you can sing along too in the audience. We won't, we won't judge. We won't judge. You got this. All right. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Verse 2, here we go. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me. Verse 3, one more song, yeah. Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me all the way. On the cross you died for me. I will ever live. Everyone sing now. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Give everyone a round of applause. They were so brave. Thank you. You may be dismissed to Children's Church. You may be dismissed. Thanks, guys, for coming up. They get a round of applause. Well, on behalf of, yeah, let's give them a round of applause. That's right, come on. You didn't come up here. No, joking. On behalf of Seminary Church, I would like to welcome you to our worship service today. Um, we're glad you've chosen to join us today. I see many friends, new faces, old faces, and we don't want to just take a special time to thank the newcomers and the first-time guests. Now, don't worry. Don't worry. We, we don't want to embarrass you. We're not going to call you up front like the little kids. We just simply want to direct your attention that we have a welcome gift for you at our welcome center, which is outside, just outside the sanctuary, turn left. Again, we want to welcome you for those who are first-time attenders or newcomers. Thank you for coming today. Just a word about COVID as it seems to be everywhere still. Um, as we gather together in a post, well, I shouldn't say post-COVID, in a COVID world, we just want to encourage everyone to do what it is that they feel is best. Uh, my goal here at Seminary Church is to be and is to provide the best atmosphere, regardless of where you stand. For those tuning in online, if you feel more safe to stay at home, we understand. If you're if you're at a place where you're kind of going out in the marketplace and you kind of feel safe to return, but only wearing a mask, please do so. You know, we want to make sure that our church is there for you regardless of where you stand. So those of you who are near or new here, again, our vision is to serve the community through building relationships, connecting with local, local organizations, and teaching the Bible intentionally to impact others for Jesus Christ. And the fact that you're here today shows no coincidence that you would like to see our community impacted. So thank you for being here today. As we come to the point in our offering, I just want to say, you know, in a, in a couple minutes we'll get ready for that, but just want to say a few things about how COVID has changed things and then I uh, want to tell a story. So again, now that COVID is here, we no longer pass the offering plate. There's offering plates at uh, either entrance to the sanctuary, but more so just a story. You know, and I just want to let you know that later on tonight, this evening, we're going to have about 12 to 15 youth here. 
Yes, yes. Yes, see, this is, an int- this is an opportunity to connect with our community. And so I just want to say, like, as exciting as that is, guess what it requires? This building requires electricity, right? I mean, and, and, and maybe when it's hot, it requires air conditioning. And then when it's cold, it requires heat. And then, well, you got to do something with the kids. You know, it, I mean, I guess we could play like Duck, Duck, Goose. But no, like we have, you have vi- videos and curriculum and stories. And, 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 and we have to go places because, you see, the world is a crazy place. And you can't just expect kids to come here to church and have fun without doing something for them, without providing them some curriculum, without trying to invite them to be transformed, made into the image of God. And so I just want to say thank you for your continued gifts here at Seminary Church. They go for things like the curriculum, like the electricity, like the heat. You know, I'm new up here to to Fort Wayne. I hear it gets cold in the winter. Am am I going to, am I going (laughs) to, were they lying to me? Were they lying to me? People told me, they told me that you better buy four wheel drive, son. Mm -hmm." I was like, wait, seriously? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. True story. They were concerned. They they were really concerned. (laughs) Family, too, yeah. So again, so thank you for the offerings. Thank you for your continued generosity to support Seminary Church. As we go into our time of prayer, we just want to uplift those on our prayer list as well as uh, other uh, praises and prayers. I'll I'll do something first. I want to invite, are there any in this uh, congregation who would like to uplift things in prayer or in praise? We have one um, uh, petition this morning, just again, a prayer for Peggy Keller, who's experiencing migraines, as well as uh, for some of her friends, Cindy Ray, um, who's just been released from the hospital and whose fame is going through some difficult times. Are there other things that we'd like to uplift in prayer or in praise? In prayer or in praise, we invite you to do so at this time. You don't have to, you don't have to be shy. We're, we're a small congregation. We like to just go to God in prayer. So the same thing. Please do so. Okay. Well, we can continue to pray for the family of Jean Ann Tribulet, friends and family of Don Wanger, Cindy Burns, Brenda Kahn, Marilyn Fleshman, Sarah Harvey, Kathy and Ed Jarboe, as well as our shut ins, those homebound. COVID, and all the prayer requests that we have brought forth today. Would you join me in praying? Would you please bow your heads with me? Let's pray. Oh, dear God, I thank you for bringing everyone here to church this morning. Look out here, and I see family and friends, new visitors and guests, individuals who love this community and have lived here and know it well. God, you knew that we would be here. God, you're constantly watching over us, and you're constantly protecting us and constantly working things out for the good for us. And Lord, we acknowledge that you love us more so than we, than we love you. You go to great lengths to call us your own. We, for that, we are eternally grateful. Each one of us here, we sh- we've showed up today, and if we're truly honest with ourselves, there are things that you have been sustaining us in our life. Providing us jobs, providing us family, providing us good opportunities, Lord. And we're just so grateful for what you've done for us. We don't deserve any of this grace. And yet you've chosen to give it to us. You've chosen to use us to display your goodness in the world. When God created this world and said, I want to show this world my beauty, he created you. He created you. And so when we hear that, we just acknowledge that we come here today not ever feeling like that's the case, right? I mean, who here today came and said, oh, I'm so glad God created me? We come here today and say, say, my life is a wreck. And I hurt the people closest to me. And I don't have it all figured out. And so right here from this pulpit, I just want to declare in the decree to forget, to, to... to transmit God's forgiveness to all of us because we know that that forgiveness is the only way that we can be reconciled to us, reconciled to God, and reconciled to our community. If there have been things we have said or done that we need to be forgiven for, Lord, please forgive us. If there have been things that we have said and done 
that have pushed us further away from you, God, please forgive us. Lord, our sermon today mentions that the words we speak have so much power, and yet we carelessly toss them around, hurting others. And for that, Lord, we ask forgiveness. God, this week we are going to need you. This week we're going to need you because we have loved ones in our congregation who have passed away, and we have spouses who are trying to navigate this time of bereavement. God, we're going to need you because we have family members and friends who are being discharged from the hospital and still don't know exactly what's going on. We ask you to be with Cindy and Cindy's sister, Lori, and Cindy's brother, John. We ask you to be with Peggy Keller. We ask you to be with the family of Jean Tremblay, the family of Don Wenger. God, this week we're going to need you because, well, life is pretty tough and we don't have it figured out. So God, standing here in this pulpit, I just ask you to intercede over everyone here in this congregation. And for that, Lord, how about we ask you to intercede everyone here in this town? And let's go bigger than that, Lord. How about everyone here in this state? And why not ask everyone here in our nation? And why not ask to intercede for everyone here in the world? The situations in Afghanistan, the situations in the real, the situations in our, in our uh, governments, the situations all over. And Lord, sitting here in the sanctuary today as one body of Christ, we want to conclude this time of prayer by, sign, by saying a prayer that unites us with all Christians around the world. Would you please join me in reciting our Lord's Prayer together as you've taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. This morning's epistle reading is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping him, there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our passage of scripture for today is taken from James. James chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. 
Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways, and anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body and sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds and reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the sound mouth, out of the same mouth, come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives? Or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you, let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. This is the word of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to say the first part of a nursery rhyme, a childhood taunt, and I want you to say the rest. Is that okay? Are you ready? Everyone nod your head in agreement, make sure. There's some more coffee out there, you know, let's see, we got you here. All right. Direction's clear. I'm going to say something, you're going to finish the rest. Sticks and stones may break my bones. Bones will never hurt me. That's right. That's the way I've heard it said. My sermon today simply asks this question. How's that going for you? Is that really so? I've heard it too. And I'm here today just to say that's not quite how I've experienced it. I don't know if you're like me, but I've, I've broken bones, right? And those kind of recover. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of a, a what is it, hitch in the get up, a get you, whatever that is. That's right. But over my life, I've discovered that the things that have hurt the most have actually been words. Let's see if we can have a few examples. I'm going to start off with one, but don't be offended. I'm going to offend everyone. Okay, so so, so if you're the first one, so just, just, just wait. Just wait. It's coming. It's coming. Don't worry. So women... Wives, ladies, let, let's, let's just imagine the scenario. It's Saturday morning. Oh, already. Already, that's right. That, that's it. The trash needs to be emptied out. So you look at your husband and say, Dear sweetie, my favorite husband, I have a thousand things to do today. Can you please take out the trash? So you spend the rest of your day running errands and take care of your business. You finish your errands and come home. And guess what you're met with? That's right. You come home, and sitting right there where you left it is the trash. So what do you do? Now, we all know what you're thinking. It's, it's okay. We're in church. I understand. You're thinking something like this. That no good man of mine has been sitting here all day watching football or mowing the yard or tending the crops, and he hasn't done a single thing. And so what do you do? You go up to him and say, well, I'm going to show him a piece of my mind. So you say, husband, you haven't taken out out the trash all day. If you don't get this, you're toast. And what does he respond with? What do you mean I haven't been working all day? I mowed the yard. 
change the oil in your car, put up the shelves you asked me to, took care of a few more things around the house, drop off things at the post office, took the kids to the soccer practice. I haven't had time for me today. I just sat down for the first time and the argument begins. What I want to uplift here is not that it's just a husband and wife. What I want to uplift here is sticks and stones can break our bones. But maybe James is on to something. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small word. Parents, I was going to offend everyone, I promise you. How do you handle interactions if your children don't do what you tell them to do? Oh, I know how this goes. Your spouse comes and says, listen, they've been absolutely rotten all day. I want you to go up there and tell them to clean up their room. So you go up there and say, okay, okay, I'm going to put my foot down. You go up there, knock on the door. Hey, daughter, you should clean your room. Don't want to talk to you. I'm going to count to 10 if this room isn't cleared. And then, you know, slams the door, things storm out. She starts avoiding you. You start avoiding her. And this is your own daughter, the one you're tasked with raising. Now it's trying to avoid the parent. You know, sticks and stones can break my bones, but maybe James is on to something when he says, words corrupt the whole body and set the course of one's whole life on fire. I'm aware I've just used a couple of examples that may not be applicable to all of us. This is the 21st century. It's not just okay to make fun of spouses and wives. You know, like we, we, get, we have to make fun of everyone. No. I shouldn't have said it that way. <laughs> I didn't want that to be fun. I'm really serious. Like I felt bad. Like I was like, shame on you. Don't... What do you do when your neighbor is doing something you don't like? Right? I mean, you go up, you get the courage, go up to them, knock on the door, and you say, and that's right, you know, the next week, there's three times the amount of leaves in your yard. You're like, okay, that, that was great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, I tried. What do you do when there's a church member? God forbid. You know, you go up to them during a Thanksgiving dinner and say something like, and then the next week, and during Advent, they're on the other side of the sanctuary, right? What about if you're a coworker? What about if you're a supervisor? You have to kind of you know, monitor someone's employee you know, uh, uh, supervision and go up there and say, listen, hey, hey, this, you, you need to quit knocking it off. Quit knocking around. You know, things aren't shaping up right now. And months later, the, still, the performance is still the same. What do you do when a family member gets on your nerves? I mean, I don't even have time to go into that, but I guess all these instances come whether you're married or single, husband or wife, employee or employee, family member, neighbor, or anyone. These things come down to a basic concept. I say, why do the words we speak get us into so much trouble? Why is it so hard to communicate things the right way? Why can words hurt so much? If you've ever had trouble with this, we won't take a show of hands because we know it's everyone. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to turn to the person next to you and say, neighbor. That's right. Now, 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 no, no sarcastic grins, but just kind of turn to him and give a poke and say, hey, neighbor, I got, I got a message for you. You can do it and say, hey, neighbor, I got a message for you. God has a special message for you. God has a special message for you. You need to tame your tongue. You need to tame your tongue your tongue. Oh, that's right. Okay, you can tip me later. It's all right. It's all right. You need to tame your... I saw some people having too much fun there, so I like, just be careful. I saw some spouses going like... That's right. This message is for you. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah. So a couple of things to uplift. First things first, James. This passage is taken from the book of James, and right off the cuff, it's James. James admits that he's writing to Christian leaders. I mean, he says in verse 1, you know, Christian leaders, you should not aspire to be leader because you will be judged by a stricter standard. But then he also, in verse 2, kind of universally applies it to all of us. I mean, he points out something so simple that says, all of us, each of us, are going to struggle with this. There's one thing that is least so common to everyone that no one can contain. The tongue. I mean, check out the language he uses here. The tongue can either build up or the tongue can destroy. 
With it, we bless the Lord, our Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the image and likeness of God. And that's the second thing I want to uplift here is, you know, there's a reason why James is spending so much time on this text preaching it to you and to me. Because just look at the word said. I mean, look at the language used. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make it obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, he continues in verse 5, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it, make great, it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the body parts. It can corrupt the whole body and set the course of one's life on fire. I mean, this should have in the lower corner like warning, you know, explicit content. Because what he's saying here is, yes, you, yes, me, yes, all of us. That doesn't matter if you are a husband or a wife, if you're single, if you're married, if you're a parent, if you're a child. Your words you say can get you into so much trouble. Try posting something on Facebook, right? And then three pages later, four days later, you're like, oh, that's the last time I do that, Right? And yet, here we are today, we have to almost just go to church and say, okay, maybe there's some advice, there's some aspect, there's something that we have to pay attention to. And that's what God is, that's what James is saying here. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can hurt forever. Tame your tongue. So I get it. We're here today, and I hear you saying, you're kind of looking at me like, okay, okay, you got me, you got some funny stories, it was good. But what should I actually do? Like, what do you literally want me to do? Here's what I want you to do. First things first, just take away that the first thing James is talking about here is that your tongue can be deadly with anyone, neighbors, family, friends. Watch it. Guard it. Be careful. Look at the things that can happen from a tongue. Gossip, slander, belittling, lying, cursing, intimidating, judgmentally, mentally. Being judgmental, being cynical, all these things. And I'm just getting the tip of the iceberg. Guard your tongue. Watch your tongue. And the second thing you want to uplift is you actually have to tame your tongue. There's a reason James wrote this. He said, you have to be quick to listen and slow to speak, for the anger does not achieve the righteousness of God. You know, basically everything that we do to try to reiterate something isn't the right way to do it. The first thing you try to do when you want to get someone's attention is speak louder, right? You're almost convinced they didn't hear you. Didn't you hear me take out, say to take out the trash? Didn't you hear me say stop blowing leaves? And, I mean, it doesn't work to speak louder sometimes. It doesn't work to try to win the conversation. It doesn't work. So the third thing I want us to take away is that really there are situations when we can learn a lot from what James is saying. That's the message, short and simple, basic and sweet. Sticks and stones can break our bones, but words can last forever. So you as Christians, we as Christians need to pay attention to what it is we're saying. You know, fortunately, there is a way, there is a solution that James is talking about. And it says right here, my brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. Slow to speak and slow to become angry because the anger does not achieve the righteousness that God desires. So in conclusions, as we take this time of communion, I know each one of us struggle with this. But as we take this time of communion, God knows that we can't really change ourselves. I know that each one of us sitting here would like to change the way we speak, would like to change the way we interact. But the beauty about taking this communion today is that we recognize that we don't have to do it ourselves. This is like a self-help seminar, but then the answer, the antidote is sitting right here in this communion elements. I'm, if I were just to preach this message and then leave it at that, say, and see you next week. We'll have a pop quiz, how everyone's doing. We would all fail. We'd all say we did a little bit good and a little bit bad. But what is being said here, this process of sanctification, the reason why we're here in this church today is because we recognize that we ourselves cannot transform ourselves into the thing that we want to become. But instead, when we surrender and ask God to come into our lives, we can be transformed. 
y'all are looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, I'm telling you, when we go to take communion, you're going to say, what is this communion about? What is it that I'm doing? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the elements, meditate on that, and ask God to transform your tongue. Transform your, this, this vessel, transform this body part. Because you can do so much good or so much harm. So in conclusion, as we as Christians like to work on so many things, let's work on taming our tongue. We use words all the time. We use words to communicate with our spouses, with our children, with our coworkers. And chances are we've hurt people by the things we've said. What I'm here today is to try to put an end to some of this bickering and drama. I'm here today to remind you that we can learn a lesson from James's text today. I'm here to remind you that sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can hurt forever. Let us pray. Oh God, we admit that sometimes we have no power to control what we say. Lord, we know that our emotions and tongue gets ahead of us, gets ahead of our minds and our hearts, and we are quick to speak and slow to listen. So Lord, we repent of these things that we have done and come now to this time of communion asking you to change us, God. Lord, help us to be slow to speak, full of loving words, full of your spirit, overflowing with love and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we go into this time of communion, we have extra elements in the back of the sanctuary and also more elements up front. Due to COVID, we, of course, are having this kind of passed out in this way. However, I've been brought to my attention that not everyone may have received communion elements. If there are extra in the back, maybe if you could either raise your hand, we could have an usher get them to you. Or also, for those, we will have a, a line come forward for the distribution. So does that make sense? So if there are there any communion elements in the back? I'm looking over here. Looks like, all right. Okay, so I think we're all, so if you do not have elements, simply at the end, come forward. We will have the distribution of that. Please join me in the liturgy by responding with the text and bold found on the screen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to his church, which can deliver us from slavery to sin and death. And he made a new covenant with us by water and spirit. And when Christ ascended, he promised to be with us forever. 
and the power of the Word and the Spirit. And on the night that he gave himself to betray, to be betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took a cup, blessed it, and gave thanks, saying, take and drink, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And so, in remembering of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and all these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, Lord, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit and in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. For those who have elements in your pew, please feel, feel free to do and take them at this time. For those who do not, please feel free to come forward. We will share there. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. Did everyone receive the elements who would have liked to receive them?
closing hymn, please join us in standing in body or in spirit as we sing our closing hymn. Jesus, name above all names. So, dear church, this week, go with this benediction. May God transform us so that we can become quick to listen and slow to speak. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.